start with a small story. Both these guys are studying in first year of their computer engineer. The first guy, his name is Atul. And he is uh, asking his friend, the second guy, to bring a Turbo C software setup. What this second guy gave to Atul was this. Embarrassing, right? Atul is disappointed and this second guy is embarrassed. Now you would understand why I didn't name that second guy in my presentation. Well, seven years and countless learnings ago, this was me. And this is me today, representing a technology company. Thank you. Very close friends of mine know about that incident. I am not sure even if Atul remembers it right now. But still I chose to tell this embarrassing story. Because it's a story that convinced me today to be here and talk on the theme growth. Growth does not necessarily mean a huge success. Rather than a destination, it's a journey. All it takes is few ingredients and that's what I have come through. I remember, I still remember the first uh, day of my engineering college when uh, teachers used to have their first lecture as an induction session where they used to ask us our uh, name, our native place and why, why we chose to be an engineer. And to the third question, I had this answer. Because of the passion for computers I had from my childhood. And I remember all students laughing at this answer every single time. Maybe because it was a filmy answer from most unnoticeable guy in the classroom. And then they used to ask me a second question. Do I have a computer at first place at home? I came from a village with 14 hours of electricity load sharing. No mobile network, no medicals, no Xerox machines. I studied in Zila Parishad school. There was no way I could have an access to a computer or internet in my early childhood. No wonder why I didn't uh, distinguish between a setup file and a shortcut file. It was difficult for them to understand the passion I had for computers when I, I had hardly used any. I still remember the talk that I wrote and recited on the teacher's day in second year of my engineering. Only because that earned me a best friend, Mayura, co-founder of Dria. She brought a lot of colors to my life. She pushed me beyond my limits. She became my source of energy. And then we grew together. And then we never turned back. I had shared with Mayura the dream I had from childhood. The dream of starting our own company. I remember we used to bunk boring lectures in college, sit in server lab and explore technology. And we attended Pune User Group's technology sessions. We attended, uh, we, we, we became Microsoft student partners and we were exploring technology like we had never done before in our life. And then this guy was launched. It was a huge innovation in the field of natural user interface back when Microsoft released it. I mean, you can now, there is a way to interact with computers without touching any electronic instrument, without wearing anything, unlike traditional mouse, keyboard, sixth sense technology. And the Kinect became the fastest selling electronic device ever in the history. And this amazed me. But what even more amazed me was the way these sensors used to work. Kinect has been fed thousands of images of human bodies in various poses, hand coded with each and every body part and that data, tens of terabytes of data has been fed to a machine learning algorithm through which Kinect has learned to detect human bodies, to detect how a human looks like, to detect the activities. And this amazed me and we both did uh, a research project in our final year of engineering uh, that, that was for physiotherapy patients and it was helping physiotherapy patients in their exercises using Kinect sensor. It was calculating the health metrics and helping them in easy recovery of uh, those physiotherapy patients. And we did this project 
uh, way before Kinect was officially launched in India and Microsoft recognized our work that year with the award Microsoft India Rockstars which they usually gave only to professionals. Thank you. Not to brag, but we both had seven job offers on this day. A dream for every engineering student and we rejected them all because we had found a path, a technology that our future startup will work on. I, if I look back, I, I can see what I'm made of. There are few ingredients that I would like to list here. Believe me, those guys didn't sponsor my talk. <laughs> Resources, to which uh, I didn't have an access before engineering in my village. In my cases, uh, those were uh, devices and internet. Once I got access to them, it, they helped me grow. We can't agree more on what importance time has in our lives. Curiosity doesn't kill the cat. Ignorance does. Illusion of control does. And it's the ignorance which brings illusion of control. Remember this scene from the movie Kung Fu Panda? It's the illusion of control which restricts you from fulfilling your destiny. Mindset is that Boolean variable which is added to all the above ingredients. Without the right mindset, you won't grow. And the last but not the least, people who surround you. In my case, the people who surrounded me really helped me grow. I read, on, I read this on Twitter a few days ago. Become friends with people who aren't your age. Get to know someone who doesn't come from your social class. Hang out with people whose first language isn't the same as yours. This is how you see the world. This is how you grow. And coming back to our journey, Mayura and I started Dria one year ago. We started, but we were working on natural user interface, which is technology of future. Dria derives its name from Sanskrit word Indriya, which means senses. The five dots in our logo depict five senses that human body has. To the devices that can see, we teach to observe. To the devices that can hear, we teach to listen. To the devices that can sense, we teach to feel and then we present those devices to you. We make sense. And we started and we were having fun. We were chasing our dream full time. We uh, had few uh, prototypes, product prototypes for construction and uh, hospitality industry. And we were having few beta customers. We were having some good feedbacks to work on to uh, improve those products and take them to the market. But somehow, the joy of satisfaction was missing. Then soon we realized we were using that technology, the potential of this futuristic technology for solving the problems of rich who don't have much problems. At least, not as much as these people have. If we look around in our society, we find a lot of domains, lot of issues that need to be addressed. Education is one of those domains which we just carried along for generations without caring about its quality. We have been through the same education system and I guess everybody will agree. And then we after we realized this, we went to schools, we uh, talked to students, teachers, parents, we did a survey on how a current uh, learning process is uh, going on. And we came to know about the issues and we came to know about Quest, Quality Education Support Trust. These guys are working restlessly for improving the quality of education in India. They want to replace the theoretical learning method by a practical learning method through which students will understand concepts. And after we came to know about these guys, we contacted them. We met their uh, researchers, we met their educationists. And what we came to know was the main ingredients of education system are the content and the process. And there had been attempts of using technology in education, but those attempts those technologies, some of those are already we are using in our education system right now, they are not serving the purpose well because they have one of these problems. 
they digitize all the content and the process that is out there in the syllabus without noticing that the content is useless. And they don't allow kids to make mistakes. Let's take an example of e-learning system that we have in schools. Those are just passive videos that we digitize from the content that we have in textbook and we show them to students how many of you, how many of those students would pay attention to them. And they showed us some product prototypes where uh, they were either questionnaires or games and there was a question for dragging and dropping one object uh, but only into a particular area that way students can't make any mistakes. And if students don't make mistakes, how will they grow? So we understood, they told us that if we need to use technology in education, we need to take care of three things. First, rich instruction design. Second, it should allow students to make mistakes. And third, the teacher's role should be a teammate, philosopher and guide. And then with these uh, guys, the guys in quest, we created a small prototype. We just started with it. And uh, we created a prototype where we can use our interactive technology in education. And now why interactive technology? Because students love to play games. They love to explore content. They love to experiment with things. And instead of sitting at one place and attending some lecture, and then we took ahead, we, then we go ahead, and then we took this concept forward. We had a rich instruction set from them. And then we decided to make a prototype to how to see how does it work. And uh, what I'm going to show you today here is a small prototype that we created in association with Quest. I'm glad to introduce my friend Mayura, uh, who is a co-founder of Dria. And we both will uh, show you uh, a demo of that small prototype that we created. Mayura, can you please come on stage? The first uh, prototype that we created was based on multi-touch. So uh, the use case was a remote education center where a teacher and student can collaboratively work from remote places and they can work together. And this worked and so I'll just join a session from here. This works over internet and Mayura will join a session from there. So we, uh, the student and teacher can collaboratively, yeah, so if you can see here, we have a globe, we have a digital globe and what this solves is the problem created by the physical globe. You can't slice each and every physical globe that you have and uh, teach to students about latitudes and longitudes and various other factors. So if I just, uh, you can see uh, Mayura's output on those screens and my uh, computer's output on this screen and we can change the skin, we can play some animation to show the slices of the globe that we have and Mayura can collaboratively work from there as well. So if she changes the tilt angle and gives the earth some rotation, I am able to see it. Now this particular, uh, yeah, this particular uh, demo is just a small prototype to see how these capabilities can go and uh, to see how the touch and gestures can be integrated. And with this system in place, they want to establish centers across the uh, country where th these guys having rich instruction set can teach students, teachers and parents about how to teach, how to uh, clear the concepts. And by taking just one concept from uh, the textbook and not the complete syllabus. So understanding the earth is the first prototype that we are creating. This is just a start and we created a small version of this on the uh, gestures as well that we would like to show you. So if you see here, I'll host a session from here as well. And she is joining the session. Yeah. And now, yeah, with my hands, I can just teach that particular student about the earth's rotation or the sun's position. So I can teach him the day and night and a lot of other stuff that can collaboratively work on. This works with keyboard, this works with mouse for those machines which doesn't have touch and gestures and this works with gesture and touch and other technologies as well where students can just play games, enjoy and in the end have some kind of learning. So uh, this is just a start. The motive 
is not to create students like these anymore. Thank you.